is flowing. We've got people who just aren't shooting the ball well yet. Mills. Oh, <laughs> the shooter's touch. <laughs> well, you know, you can't imagine how much strength it takes to just get off a shot after you go up like that and shoot it on the way down. That's, a, that's an outstanding play. Kendall Gill. There's Hamilton, ever active in the weave. Uh, Michigan now is playing that matchup zone, and this is what Illinois expected after talking to the coaching staff. They thought that Michigan would come out and play zone. Kendall Gill for three, giving Illinois the lead. Uh, they shot the lights out of the three-point line the other night. Good fast break transition. That's Ramil gonna, Robinson finished it off. Wayne, that's where, that's where the, the balance of this game may lie. Illinois' biggest fear is Ramil Robinson getting the ball in the middle of the court uh, after Michigan breaks defensive pressure because he's the kind of guy who can either take it to the lane and make the play or score it himself. Score it for Nick Anderson. And a foul. on Glenn Rice. It's his first, the third on the team. Well, this is just pure athletic ability. Uh, if you watch Anderson play, his preferences are to get the ball in the wing, either drive it through the lane or drive it baseline and just jump over people. And there isn't anybody in the country who he can't jump over and, and shoot, uh, shoot the, get a shot off against. Uh, you know, it's great to have players who can create offense like that because it takes pressure off of your offensive unit and, and your play execution when you just go out and get a basket with a one-on-one -on -one move. Illinois with the lead. This is Robinson of Michigan. Higgins. He got fouled. Yep, yeah. he got held. Nick Anderson, the guilty party. On Anderson, his second personal already for the leading score and rebounding of the rebounder of the Fighting Illini. There's Lou Henson. When anybody who's watched Illinois basketball this year uh, recognizes what they do defensively. They have such great athletes. They can defend, all of their athletes can defend any position on the floor, and uh, they'll switch uh, the entire ball game defensively. Bill Robinson says score that field goal by Ramil Robinson. He's got a foul down low against Illinois. Lowell Hamilton, I believe. Well, Michigan will get this ball back then and get an opportunity. Get, they'll get another possession. Hamilton picks up his first personal foul. That is the third on the team. We'll be back after these commercial messages. Football fans, get ready for the battle of the century. As unbeaten Budweiser takes on undefeated Bud Light. It's Bud versus Bud Light in Bud Bowl 1. Pick up your official scorecard wherever you see this display. Hey, Brett, super idea. You see the neck on that guy? Use it to follow the action and you could win. So get ready. Get set. On January 22nd, Bud Bowl 1. This time, it's for real. It's about power and performance. A hot ride with hot new looks. The dramatic new Grand Am. in Oklahoma. And now when I walk into a New York City restaurant and order up a little bitty Kansas City strip, makes me feel right at home. I've got a taste for some real food. There's the Michigan bench. Coach Bill Frieder, his team tied up with the Fighting Illini. Michigan shooting 66.7% from the field. They get the ball out of bounds with a foul prior to the timeout. The uh, regular officials are here. Just made it in through the inclement weather outside of the Champaign area. Ramil Robinson at the point. Again, now watch the defense on Illinois' part. They will not expend energy trying to fight over and through picks. They simply, they simply switch uh, players on every pick. 
They're calling it tight. Hamilton called for a foul there. His second personal, that is the third on the team, or that fourth on the team. Well, you know, it'll be interesting to see. It's the first game I've ever done where officials were late for a ball game. It'll be interesting to see how they adapt to the play now to see if they're going to blow a quick whistle or if they're going to it's going to take them three or four minutes to get into the flow of the game themselves. Bill Robinson was here from the outset. The other two just arrived. Higgins leaves it short. Rice is there to clean up. Mills. Well, uh, since Bill Frieder has been at Michigan, you know, he's had big, strong uh, ball clubs. And this is probably the, the area where he has beat teams consistently over the last few years. They can absolutely dominate you inside, particularly on the offensive board. On the outside, Gill, Rice the rebound. Ramil Robinson on the drive to Griffin. Blocked by Kendall Gill. Boy, that is a spectacular uh, defensive play because Michigan came down with a three-on-two break. Uh, looking to go on top, and uh, uh, they just turned it right around. Ramil Robinson picks up. Is it Robinson or Griffin who picked up the foul? I thought it was Ramil Robinson. It is Robinson. And again, that, that call there is, you know, you, you have to get used to how the whistle's going to blow. Uh, all Ramil was doing was riding his man. He had his hand on the back and uh, hand checking, and, and they've called that twice on him now. And that's where Illinois hurts you. They just get, they catch the ball, they jump right over the top of you, and then it's just a matter of whether or not the, uh, they're making the shots today. Emil Robinson, Terry Mills, struggling across the line. Higgins, Rice. Boy, Glenn Rice is making a living today off the boards already. He's got four or five rebounds here in the first six minutes of the ball game. Bardo penetrates. Oh, Nicely done to Paul. Michigan prefers to play the man-to-man -man defense. Uh, they don't feel like they can win a ball game if they have to play the matchup zone on a consistent basis. Ramil Robinson drew that foul on Kendall Gill, his first, already the fifth on Illinois. Wayne, Michigan's biggest question mark coming into this season, we all know that Illinois was concerned about outside shooting in the past. Their biggest question mark this year was how well Ramil Robinson would play uh, with no other experienced uh, backcourt mate. And in my opinion, he set the, the tone for this year and last season's North Carolina game in the NCAA tournament when Gary Grant had a terrible game uh, and Ramil Robinson uh, really kept Michigan in that ball game. And uh, uh, you know, he's, now people are starting to talk about uh, Ramil Robinson when they start talking about the best point guards in the country. Bill Frater says he'd like to have another guard to go alongside of Ramiro Robinson. He has people playing out of position in that two-guard slot. Well, uh, that might be the case, but if you can, when, when they get to the point where Higgins is a quality big guard, it's nice to have a six-nine uh, yeah, guard in the back in the backcourt. They had one in East Lansing, and they went all the way. Battle. His second from the field. He has four. Well. Bardo tips it out of play. You know, for most of us, we, we sit here and we watch Illinois play, and we, we just think, gosh, I wish I had the athletic ability these guys had. Uh, boy, what I would do on the floor. <laughs> and uh, they are really exceptional. Robinson clears from the pressure. Blue Henson mentioned that his team has to do a lot of things well to win ball games. They have to beat teams in other ways than with size and physical uh, prowess. Like that. Quickness steals. Bardo to Gill on Griffin. Uh, something tells me that by the end of this ball game, we're going to have a season's worth uh, of a highlight film. <laughs> there are people making great plays. Griffin and Harry Mills has called for a foul pushing off inside his first personal now five team fouls on Michigan Wayne the one thing you cannot do offensively as a point guard you can never pick up your dribble uh, when you have no one to pass it to uh, particularly against Illinois because uh, as a team they have such uh, quick hands defensively uh, that you know they'll strip it from you 
And any time you get to the point guard loses the ball, obviously, it sets up the fast break on the other end. Mark Hughes in the lineup now in place of Griffin for Michigan. Kirk Taylor is also in the ball game, replacing, I believe, Sean Higgins. And Lloyd Vaught in, in the middle for Mills. Now, Mills has to be taken out. He may be a little winded. And what will happen in a big game like this sometimes, if the adrenaline's flowing a little too much, uh, you'll hyperventilate a little bit and, and run yourself out. That's traveling on Glenn Rice. Bill Frieder is furious. He wanted a foul call. He felt Rice was bumped on the play. Talking with the official Tom Rucker, Sam Licklider is also here along with Bill Robinson, the officials from the Big Ten Conference. Well, this is the kind of game that'll <laughs> bring out the emotion in, in the most mellow of personalities. Um, here's the play. Very difficult. Obviously, I think Coach Breeder wanted a foul there. Very difficult to see from our angle. Technical foul called on Michigan. Kendall Gill at the free throw line. Two shot foul on the bench. Technical on the bench. Well, Frieder hasn't stopped yet. Uh, I guess if you're going to get a technical in this kind of ball game, you get it early and get it over with. Uh, you don't want one down a stretch where it could really uh, uh, turn the momentum. Illinois leads by four. This is Bardo, Kendall Gill. Boy, Kenny Battle. Oh! <laughs> Boy, now that is something. That is something right there. Kenny Battle, whose dream is to do the 360 Tomahawk Slam, <laughs> and almost did one the other night here against Wisconsin. Robinson breaks it across for Michigan. Well, Illinois uh, continues to beat Michigan in the middle of that matchup zone. And if they don't cut that pass off, uh, the Illinois will, will score at will. At will. Robinson off the mark. Kendall Gill with a long rebound. This is Nick Anderson. To Gill. Lloyd bought the rebound. Rice for three. <laughs> Nobody does that better in the country than Glenn Rice. Catch it and shoot it. And you know, there are very few... There are very few players who can do that anymore. Uh, most guys are going to want to put it on the floor, gather themselves before they go up. 11.40 left to go, first half. Three-point try, Anderson. Wayne, both of these uh, ball clubs uh, are capable of uh, a scoring uh, outburst. The, they can be very, very streaky. Uh, some people feel like it's going to be the team that has the most streaks or maybe the team that has the streak last who's going to win the ball game. Taylor off the mark. The foul occurred before the tap in by Rice. And it'll belong to Illinois. Well, Kurt Taylor uh, made a good move at the basket. The one thing that most college guards never learn, and I don't know why, is once you get dribble penetration, you've got to stop and shoot the jumper. 13 left to be played first half. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. Have you ever tried a beer and felt like the taste just missed your mouth? Well, taste again. Because times have changed. Here's one big, bold draft that packs a full till taste you can get your hands around. Extra gold draft. It's the biggest taste that's happened to beer since they put it in cans. The big difference between these two mounds of snow is the full-sized trucks buried under them. And it's important to have the right one because while the driver on the left has to get out of his cab and lock up both his hubs to get out, the driver of the Chevy just has to shift. So either get a new Chevy 4x4 this winter or make friends with someone who did. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevy truck. Relax, this isn't one of those philosophical commercials. It's just an observation. People ask me how are things at work, and it's business as usual. 
Except if you step back, you'll see there's a change. There's another name in office automation besides the ones you're so used to seeing. You see a lot more Panasonic. There must be a reason. Panasonic, office automation. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody back at Assembly Hall, home of the Fighting Illini of Illinois. That foul on Kirk Taylor a moment ago prior to the timeout. 16 fouls now in Michigan. We still have a better than 11 minutes to go, and this is small. Wayne, I was just going to say, uh, through the first nine minutes of the game, if I had to recap where the game's been won and lost, it's been Illinois' ability to penetrate Michigan, the Michigan zone defense right down the lane. That's where they're scoring the most, their most points. And also, when they get it inside, they've been able to hit it back out and shoot the three-point uh, field goal. Away from the ball, Lloyd Vaught, who just scored at the other end, picks up a foul. His first team is over the limit with 10.46 to go in the half. Well, Lloyd Vaughn has been the player that's really hurt Illinois over the past couple of years. He got 24 points and close to 10 rebounds in the game down here last season. And uh, nor, it, there's no in-between with Lloyd. Uh, he's either going to be great or, or be terrible. And you'll usually know within the first three or four minutes uh, what he's going to do. Got a quick layup, so maybe he's off to a quick start. Kenny Battle at the free throw line. He has six points on three from the field, some of which have been spectacular. This is the free throw. Liberty, Marcus Liberty knocked it out of play. And last touch by Michigan. Liberty kept it alive. Well, you don't always, you know, when you're rebounding, if you can't grab it, you always want to try to get a hand on it and keep the ball alive. This is Kenny Battle. Bardo for three. You know, other than the layups, I think Illinois has attempted more three-point field goals than two-point field goals. And, boy, who would have thought that would have ever happened? After, after their the troubles they had shooting the ball last year on a case. That was unthinkable last year. Roy Vaught out high. Hughes to Rice. Good give and go. Hughes with the open pop. Vaught. <laughs> you know, at one time during the season, and this is an unbelievable statistic, Roy Vaught was averaging a, point, uh, a shot per minute play. Obviously, you play the whole game by 40 <laughs> shot attempts. What that means is that he's extremely active around the basket. He's getting offensive rebounds. He's active. He's getting position inside and creating opportunities for himself. Marcus Liberty and the slam by battle. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, we're going to have a season's worth of uh, plays to put on the highlight film in this ball game alone. This is Robinson. Wouldn't you love to have him on your team? <laughs> Lou Henson calls Kenny Battle the hardest worker he's ever had. Foul here on Battle, a little too tight on defense. That's personal foul number one, six on the team. All right, here's a chance to take a look at that Illinois full court pressure. They, they line up in a diamond set. But they're really playing man-to-man -man defense. They will always press the very first, uh, they'll double-team double, double team the first pass. Now, if you break that pressure and bring it down the middle of the floor like Taylor's doing now, they'll fall back. You know, they're very disciplined. They only look for traps in a couple different spots on the floor. Rice for three. Hughes up high on the rebound, and he's called for the foul. Mark Hughes, first personal foul. Team is over the limit, and we'll be going to the line. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you know when, it, when the new officials came in, I don't think that the two officials that were late have blown the whistle yet, have they? It, just, it seems to me... Yes, there have been one or two calls. One or two? Yeah. Kenny Battle leads the lineup. They're making uh, his entrance into the ballgame as Urban Small. Uh, you know, this is, I, I commend them for the job they're doing because uh, it's very difficult to run in oh, yes. to a game like this coming in late uh, in a, in a quick-paced game and, and, and get yourself into the, into the flow of the action. Well, they've been in now for a number of minutes, and you're right, they haven't jumped uh, on the whistles. 
Larry Smith makes good on a pair at the line. Terry Mills moves it across. Once again, see, when Michigan gets the ball in the middle and they run it right down the middle of the floor, there will not be a, a double team on, off the defensive pressure. Anderson's got a two-on-one with Smith. No. Traveling. Well, that's just unfortunate. Nobody's fault, really. When the pass was made by Anderson, he fumbled it just slightly. As a result, it hit it hit Smith in his le on his left hip instead of out in front, and he just couldn't come up with the uh, with possession. Mike Griffin back into the ball game for Michigan. Wolverines with 8:35 to go on the attack, trailing by 10. Mills needs help. That time, a foul on the defense. Irvin Small reaching in, his first personal foul. Now, the team is over the limit. Both sides over the limit. But, you know, you don't mind a foul like that because, again, uh, that's the way uh, they want their players to play defensively. Overplay, lots of pressure, and uh, uh, it looks to me right now, uh, Wayne, like Illinois probably has about 10 points off turnovers in this ballgame. Now, Here's the second place they'll trap. In the, now, this came a little too soon. They would normally want the play, offensive player to get over the half-court mark and then trap him in that corner. Essentially put him in the box with the sideline and the mid-court strike. Exactly. Vaught. Junior out of Grand Rapids. Just seven points against Minnesota. Three of five shooting from the field the other night. 18 points, 11 rebounds of the previous game against Northwestern. Makes I, good on a pair here, and he's off quickly, Steve. He has six points. I don't know if the fans can hear the give and take between the officials and the players uh, from the uh, uh, microphone on the camera, but I always enjoy that in a, t in a tough ball game. It's an ongoing conversation, it's, and it's funny to me. Come on now, stop holding, stop pushing, and, uh, because it's real intense play out there. Sean Higgins on the attack. Terry Mills on the wing. Higgins, good luck to Rice. Had it blocked from behind, it appeared. Small to Gill. Kendall Gill threw it right underneath Kenny Battle. Yeah. Again, missed opportunity in a two-on-one situation. Great call by Roger Rucker because it looked like Griffin touched that ball uh, at first. 7.57 left to go. Back after these commercial messages. Piedmont Airlines Going Places prices have a lot of people going to a lot of places. Going Places prices won't last long, so call Piedmont Airlines or your travel agent right away. On your mark, get set, go places. This is my new Buick Skylark. And since it's a Buick, it doesn't surprise me that the Skylark is very stylish. With room for five. And it's smooth and powerful. What did surprise me, though, is that Buick's little limousine is priced less than a Honda Accord DX. So, I got a little limousine. For the price of a little car. for Illinois, but really they're losing the uh, battle of the board, Steve, and I think that uh, certainly underlines how they can beat you in so many different ways, the Illini. Well, they really can. They can beat you with defense in, in terms of field goal percentage, um, you know, uh, because they're getting dominated on the board, 13 to 7, but, you know, they today they're winning this ball game with defensive pressure and converting that into points on the offensive end. Shooting percentage around 55%, as we uh, displayed for you. This is Michigan on the attack. But, you know, you look at Illinois, and, and there are two other Big Ten games. Um, you know, they held Michigan State to 40% field goal percentage. They out-rebounded Wisconsin by 13 boards, so they can just hurt you in so many different ways. Line eye leading by eight, seven and a half minutes to go, first half. You know, I really believe Michigan, and it looks like they're going straight man now for the first time. They've got to get away from that matchup zone. It just isn't working. Griffin comes down with it for Michigan. 
This is Higgins. Came off a three-game suspension with a fine performance the other night against Minnesota. Ran out of real estate right there. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Ameritech. Ameritech, solutions that work. Wayne well. Larrabee and Steve Grody at Assembly Hall in Champaign. Back here to the lineup for Bill Robinson in the backcourt for Bill Frieder's Michigan Wolverines. And I'll tell you what, uh, in for Glenn Rice, and those are the two guys on the Michigan team. What, they'll get a rest, but it won't be a long one. They, they need both those guys on the floor. Urban Small with the look inside of Liberty. The pass off the mark at the backboard. Boy, I'll tell you, you know, Illinois is going to look back at this first half when they uh, see the film, and they've played very well, but, boy, they have blown a, a three or four uh, chances to, to get an easy basket. That pass there would have been a layup had it, hit the, had it not hit the, uh, the rim. Griffin on the look inside the right, rather, Buck. Boy, not a bad luxury for Michigan having a, their third leading score uh, coming off the bench in Loy Buck. Battle. Got a rebound coming up, I believe it's... Going to be on Higgins. Yeah, it's on Higgins, I believe. Again, that's a great call because uh, Higgins snuck a quick uh, uh, hand to the chest and uh, uh, forecheck small in, you know, in fighting for rebound position. The officials making sure they have control of this game. Right there. There it is. Small makes good out of his first 11 of them. You know, it's fine. Anytime you're in a, in, a, in a ball game, I think sometimes you test the officials. Uh, you, you see what you can get away with. And usually those things happen uh, when the ball's in the air and people are fighting for rebound position. Liberty leaves the lineup. Anderson back in. Roy Vaught leaves in place of Glenn Rice for Michigan. There's Marcus Liberty coming along, and this is first year in the Illini program. Sat out last year due to Proposition 48. Great talent. Small misses the second. Anderson is there. Higgins up high, and we've got a foul underneath. Well, and Bill Frieder's finally going to get satisfaction. Uh, that's been his chief complaint in this ball game. He thinks Illinois has been over Michigan's back, and uh, he'll finally get a call. Foul is on Irvin Small, his second personal. There's the record of Frieder at Michigan. Has never won, though, as a head coach in this building. And he brought two Big Ten champions uh, through here in the mid-'80s. Well, it's funny, you know, as, as good as his record, in fact, both of these coaches, as good as their records have been, you know, for whatever reason, you don't you don't hear their names mentioned when, you, when people talk about the great coaches in the Big Ten. And, and I think their records speak for themselves. Uh, I know Illinois has uh, been a, a, a sweet 16 team in the NCAA tournament for uh, five solid years. And, of course, under Frieder, Michigan had back-to-back -back, uh, Big Ten championships. Higgins makes good out of there. Michigan has cut the gap to five with a little over six minutes to go in the half. On Rice, offensive. <laughs> Kenny Battle, second personal. Well, it's a, that's a that's a big call. Uh, I'm going to have to see the replay to make a make a decision on this one myself. We didn't have the angle, but Glenn Rice looks like he's got good position, and I don't think. See, here's what you can always tell if a player is faking a charge because if you somebody really runs you over, um, you fall right back. If they fake, if they fake the uh, charge, you'll see uh, motion from the waist up because they're faking, so they move their shoulders back. And it looked to me like Glenn uh, used a little acting job there. Michigan resumes Higgins for three. Second three-pointer of the game for the Wolverines, and they are suddenly back to within two. Well, it's it's going to be a game of streaks, and Michigan's got one going right here, and they're back in. But see, in, in Higgins and Rice, you've got two players, again, who can do what very few players can do, go straight up and shoot a jump shot without putting it on the floor. Persistence by Irvin Small. He tries it again, and Ramil Robinson finally clears. Michigan can tie with a conventional field goal. Uh, again, Ramil picked his dribble up. Michigan before the five second violation just barely before yep <laughs> four 
56 left to be played. First half, it's tightened up here in Champaign. We'll return after these messages from your local station. If you gotta go when it's 20 below, you better have it. Champion Battery. If you gotta go because the stork's arriving, you better have it. Champion Battery. 700 cold cranking amps. Pound for pound, the most powerful battery you can buy. Guaranteed to start your car. So if you gotta go, go to Auto Express at Montgomery Ward. Because we've got it. And we'll match anyone's advertised price on the Champion 700 battery. Auto Express at Montgomery Ward. Going, going, gone. Beer drinkers are knocking the doors down for the full tilt taste of extra gold draft. They're treating every can, every bottle, every 12 pack, or case they can get their hands on like pure gold. Extra gold. When a beer that packs this big a taste comes along, you've got to go for it. Accommodations arranged through Hilton. Come sample our classic American hospitality at any of nearly 300 locations across the U.S. For reservations, call 1-800-HILTONS. Wayne Larvey and Steve Grody. Michigan is on a run. Steve mentioned this would be a game of streaks, and right now Michigan is in one. They resume offensively. Well, I, you know, the streak really uh, started when Ramil Robinson came back in the ball game. I, I just think from a confidence level uh, and, and team continuity, in all phases of the game. They need him in the lineup. Griffin tried to force it inside. Nick Anderson to Kendall Gill. Bardo. Liberty open at the baseline. Robinson trying to answer. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, that is a big time move right there. Uh, quickness, speed, and strength. Taking the ball to the hole. Pass denied by Rice. Marcus Liberty out high. Kenny Battle. Uh, Kenny held, held the ball there just a little too long. When you hold the ball that long, the rest of your offensive players just stand around and nothing happens. Kendall Gill made it work. Illinois' lead again is four with 3.50 to go in the half. Yeah, Gill remedied that situation, didn't he? Just give it to me, I'll shoot it. <laughs> Terry Mills didn't handle it. Off the turnover, Illinois chance for a six-point lead. There's Lou Henson patrolling the sidelines for the Illini. You know, and, and the Michigan coaching staff just going to ask, why is Ramil Robinson not bringing the ball up the floor? Uh, you know, R Robinson's a, a guy you want to try and wear down during the ball game, but he has, has he's a great athlete, tremendously strong, but he's huffing and puffing out there right now. Can he battle? Done at the baseline. Kendall Gill. Gill has 11 points. Kirk Taylor brings it up this time. And Kirk Taylor is a, a player who's just now beginning to learn how to play the point. Uh, in high school, he was a great player, but he really played the small forward exactly. position. Exactly. Rice. That's what Bill Frader said. He said Taylor's really a small forward type, and we're trying to convert him to guard. Bardo off the glass for two and a foul on Taylor. Yes, it counts. Second personal on Kirk Taylor. It's, uh, you know, you, when you talk about each of these individual players, it sounds, if you don't know their names, you use the same description about all of them. <laughs> I mean, they're just such great individual talents, and, and that's all that was. Um, you know, in a, in a, a situation where You've got defense right on top of you. It's difficult to maintain the balance needed to shoot a good shot. And Bardo that time just rose right above it, uh, Taylor and, and, and shot a great bank shot. Durbin Small in the lineup in place of Kenny Battle for Illinois. Steve Bardo trying to complete a three-point play. <laughs> Much and better as a team from the free throw line, shooting 71, almost 72% from the foul line are the Illini. Well, and Illinois now has answered the uh, the run by Michigan. Glenn Rice <laughs> quells the momentum for a moment. You know, uh, when he goes up to shoot it, I mean, it just looks like he's going to make it every time, doesn't he? He uh, looks taller, lankier than 6'7". 
Well, he's bulked up a little bit this year, so he's improved his strength. Liberty on the drive. The people here at Illinois, people in the Chicago public school system and the Chicago high school basketball will tell you that Marcus Liberty is going to be a better player than Nick Anderson, and that says a lot. Michigan back live, Rice ahead of the field on the slam. Well, that's going to happen occasionally, and then just give Michigan credit for recognizing it. Illinois by five. 2.20 left to go in the first half. Anderson. Gill. Lloyd Vaught clears the board for Michigan. Ramil Robinson had a foot on the three-point line. Griffin, good look, Vaught. Fine ball movement by the Wolverines. Vaught now has 10 points. Uh, you, you know, for, for people seeing Vaught play for the first time, you, you're saying to yourself, how can this guy not start? I mean, uh... From the outside, Anderson off the mark. Rebound taken by Robinson. He's tied up by Marcus Liberty. The foul on Liberty is his first. The reason he doesn't start, Bill Frieder said, I started him out in Utah, and he had his worst game ever. He's more comfortable, apparently, according to Coach Frieder, coming off the bench. Oh, yeah, Boy, and, and you don't, uh, uh, coaching staff knows best, um, uh, and, and again, you're right, uh, there are just some players that are like that, and, and there's no reason to break that type of momentum. Eight points now for Ramil Robinson, three from the field, two of two at the foul line. Junior out of Cambridge, Mass., Rims in Latin High School. I believe that's the same high school that produced Patrick Ewing, if I'm not mistaken. Second upcoming for Robinson. Well, Michigan goes on a 9-1 run, gets back in it. Illinois answers back, widens the lead to seven. This free throw makes it another one-point game. Oh! Roy <laughs> Vaught keeps it alive. It's a tie game. Under two minutes to go. Coming up on a minute 30 left in the half. Liberty. Anderson, Kendall Gill lost it for a moment. <laughs> kind of quickness that's on the floor. You have to take care of the basketball. Well, and again, it seems like all the players have caught a second win right now. I'd say the last four or five minutes, the intensity, uh, as, as great as it's been the entire game, it's even picked up a notch right now. Ten to go on the shot clock. They'll have to create something with five to go. Kendall Gill, and it'll belong to Michigan. Uh, again, Michigan playing so much better now that they've gone man-to-man -man defense, gotten away from that matchup zone. Under a minute to go, time left, lower right-hand corner of your screen. Michigan looking for the halftime lead. Ah, Rumiel picked up his dribble again. Griffin, good look to Vaught. He was bumped by Small, wasn't he? Yep. You know, uh, that's fatigue factor. Uh, again, Ramil Robinson is, is now being mentioned uh, along with all the top point guards in the country. But again, the defensive pressure wears you out mentally, and you can lose your concentration a little bit. Uh, and I think that's why he's been guilty of picking the ball up uh, on four or five different occasions. Kirk Taylor comes in, and Ramil Robinson leaves the lineup. Lloyd Vaught at the free throw line. They're clarifying a signal given to the table. I will say one thing. The officials have been somewhat sloppy on their signaling to the table. There have been a couple of occasions where the scores table has had to wait and ask again who the foul is on. Irvin Small leads the lineup. Can he battle back in? Lloyd Vaught at the free throw line has 12 points. Michigan and Illinois tied at 43. 37 seconds left to go in the first half. Another change for Michigan. Hughes reports on, replacing Sean Higgins. Well, uh, Frieder's doing a good job here. He's getting some, he's getting all those people out of the game that have two fouls on him. And uh, that's, uh, that's the proper move to make. Robinson has two fouls. Taylor has two fouls. Three of three at the foul line. Excellent free throw shooter. 
yards, 78%. Well, this, you know, Vaught, uh, he's a senior, and I really feel like he's got a chance to maybe uh, have an NBA career, uh, e even as uh, a player who doesn't start in college. One-point lead for Michigan. Illinois, no shot clock now, 30 seconds to go. A chance to grab the halftime lead. They've led by, what, as many as seven, Steve, this first yeah. half? Mm -hmm. We've got exactly what we uh, thought we'd have and what we'd hoped exactly. we had. Exactly. As advertised, this one. Great, great ball game. Time winding down. This is Bardo. Kendall Gill over Taylor. Griffin to Taylor, lost it out of play. Still two seconds to go. You know, th this isn't disastrous, but this would be really a big momentum change if Illinois happens to get a another basket here. Two seconds to go. Glenn Rice defending on the inbounds. Bardo to Gill for three. Yes! Oh, that is so big. Today's game is being brought to you by Pontiac. We build excitement. By the owners of Days Inns, Hotels and Suites in the Big Ten. And by Mr. Goodwrench. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodwrench. No one. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. It's incredible. This week, get two pairs of Daily Wear contact lenses at the Eyeglass Factory for just $59.95. Plus a pair of prescription eyeglasses free. Two pairs of contacts and a pair of eyeglasses, just $59.95 at the Eyeglass Factory. Why buy eyeglasses somewhere else when you get two pairs of quality prescription eyeglasses at the Incredible Eyeglass Factory for just $59.95. This week, including bifocals, two pairs of eyeglasses, just $59.95 at the Eyeglass Factory. It's a grand opening. This week, everything's on sale. Call for details. There are many pros and cons to vacationing on the Riviera. This is what I want. These two pros are working a very unusual con. Mother? No, this isn't your mother. Uh, Miss Trumbull and I are going to be married. Really? And we are going to live in Oklahoma. Steve Martin. Michael Kay are dirty, rotten scoundrels. Thank you. Rated PG. Now playing at a theater near you. Check newspaper for time. Double meal deal, please. Double meal deal, please? You'll see a lot of twosomes at Kentucky Fried Chicken, because we've got a special double meal deal. A meal for two at one low price, just $5.99. Five pieces of juicy chicken, buttermilk biscuits, mashed potatoes, and gravy coleslaw, all for just $5.99. So come on in for Kentucky Fried Chicken's double meal deal. Double meal deal, please. Just for one. You're not hungry? Make it a double meal deal today. The future is now at the University of Michigan, a worldwide leader in education and research. We've been a prime mover in attracting major national centers for manufacturing science, space robotics, and computer communications to Michigan. As a full partner with the state in creating the fastest growing high-tech corridor in the country, the university is developing people and ideas to generate new investments, new jobs, and economic growth. As citizens, educators, and students, we know that in Michigan, the future is now.
At what university can you see world-class athletes in action? Enjoy live performances by internationally renowned musicians or productions in one of the finest performing arts centers in the world. Where can you sign on computers in classrooms, libraries, laboratories, even residence halls? Or draw knowledge from the nation's largest public university library? Halftime at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. Michigan trailing Illinois, 48 to 44. You know, so often in college basketball, Steve Grody, it seems like these great game build-ups uh, often come to the fore. It, it, this sport more than any other, the Final Four, always lives up to its building in this game here today. Much talked about about Michigan and Illinois, one of the toughest tickets to get in Illinois to this game today, yeah. and it certainly has lived up well, to the building. Well, you know, the, the question about Michigan, of course, is they haven't played many tough opponents, and you wonder what their mental preparation level was going to be coming into a game where they have to be ready to play, or they get blown out. Uh, both teams are ready, and we've got what we hope we have. Uh, you mentioned it several times, and that is the quickness factor, the defensive pressure. It can wear on a team, and I think Michigan had was streaky in the first half, as we expected, but I think in the end, maybe some of that pressure wore them down a little bit. It did wear them down a little bit, but they answered that challenge pretty well. Uh, again, it, it could very well be that the team that has the last streak wins the ball game. I thought the single most important uh, point of the first half was Michigan finally went out of that, that uh, uh, matchup zone defense, went man to man, and that's what even the ball came back up. Again at halftime, Michigan trailing Illinois by four. We're coming up uh, with head coach and athletic director John Makovic of the Fighting Illini football team, and we'll be back with that and more halftime activities after these words. The Clydesdales, the symbol of Budweiser quality. A beechwood aging, the choices natural ingredients, and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Atra Plus system with the Luba Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. On your mark, get set, go places. To all kinds of great places in all parts of this great country of ours. Presenting Piedmont Airlines Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. Before going places, prices are going, going, gone. I ate a lot of stuff because it was chic. I mean, I ate raw fish because it was chic. But steaks and burgers, they make me happy. And I like being happy. I got a taste for some real food. Some guys look at this, they see just another brake job. Just another brake job? Not to the guy who drives this car. Not to me either. The Big Ten Conference. For almost 100 years, the Big Ten has stood for academic progress, excellence, and athletic achievement. From its classrooms and research laboratories to the arenas of athletic competition, the Big Ten's reputation is unmatched. Student enrollments of more than 300,000, a living alumni base exceeding 2 million, and a concerned faculty dedicated to improving the quality of life for all people help make Big Ten universities and their graduates leaders around the world. Back at Assembly Hall at halftime, this is the Dave McClain Memorial Big Ten Coach of the Year trophy, and it is awarded this year to John Makovic, the head coach of the Fighting Illini. And uh, Coach, I'll congratulate you on the football season, but also on your new appointment as athletic director here at Illinois. Well, thank you, Wayne. It's only been three weeks, and we've had a lot of things to do since that time. 
And of course, with football recruiting in the real heart of what we're doing now, some of these things are going to be put on the back burner, but I've already begun to do my reading and catch up on the organizational part. How do you do that? I mean, how do you run an athletic department like this and yet still be head football coach, which is a full-time job, the job you came here for? Yeah, well, first of all, we wanted everyone to know that I really want to continue and intended in continue coaching football that's number one but secondly you start the same way you do with football you get a good staff you get people and of course my role is to direct them and to really set the parameters of how we'd like the program run and then assist them in solving problems that's really what uh, my job is is to help people solve problems so that we can move things along very nicely John, you spent some time in the ACC. You were down at your alma mater coaching at Wake Forest. And I think fans in this part of the country would like your evaluation of college basketball, uh, how the Big Ten stacks up to the ACC, in your opinion. Well, I'm a great college basketball fan. Of course, I went to the ACC, played in the 60s, coached in the 70s, lived in the 80s, so I've seen three decades of ACC basketball. I've not been as familiar with the Big Ten except a year at Purdue in 77 and then back. I love this brand of basketball here. It's a little more physical than other parts of the country. I think we have great athletes in the Big Ten, and I really enjoy it from top to bottom. And of course, there's always a competitive battle between who's better among many of the leagues now. But the Big Ten basketball, for my money, is the best. John, listen again, congratulations and best of luck here at Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne, very much. All right, stay tuned. We'll have more halftime activities. After these words from your local stations, this is the Big Ten Television Network. For winter fun, silver blades, funky shades, and a downhill run. It's a cool way of getting around. The silver bullet folks sell you down. So come on into cool as life. It's the right feel now. To the good life, yeah. To the good life, yeah. So come on into cool as life. The right a hunger for two, two juicy, juicy flame broiled burgers, please do it for a buck, that's right, two, I said two Burger King burgers for a buck, each with 25% more beef than a McDonald's burger, do, 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 do. for just a buck, we do it like you do, two burgers for a buck, at Burger King, I post you know, Point Dodge consistently sells more used cars than anybody in the state of Michigan, how do we do it? There's two reasons. Number one, we're experts in financing. So if you need help with the financing, you need help with the down payment, you folks need help with the monthly payments, we can do it for you. And number two, we'll never let the price stand in the way of selling you a car. This is an 85 Z28 Camaro, full power, factory iron key tops. We'll sell it for only $69.95. Folks, there's only one place you can do that, and it's Point Dodge. This weekend, and this weekend only, at the Waterman City, it's Wild Waterbed Weekend! This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, save on every waterbed we sell. Modern styles, contemporary styles, upholstered waterbeds, oak, lacquer, mirror canopy, soft sides. Hundreds of waterbeds drastically reduced. Heated systems from just $78. All of our mattresses and weightless mattresses are proven kid top. By now, your whole family will enjoy a warm waterbed from Waterbed City. Hurry, our lowest best prices won't happen every day, and they don't last forever. You will be Dick Vitale, late night Sunday on 7. Here's how the first half numbers compare, brought to you by U.S. Air. And Steve Grody, despite the uh, defense being played out there, both teams, I mentioned at the top of the show, these are two of the best shooting teams in the country. They're executing pretty well under pressure. Michigan at 53% and Illinois at 50. They really are. And uh, Illinois just got gotten the easier shots. And, and you know, Michigan's uh, got hot there towards the end of the first half and started hitting a couple of jump shots. Uh, Generally speaking, though, a team that shoots the easier shots throughout the ball game is going to come out on top. Three-point scoring, Michigan two out of five, Illinois three of nine. That certainly is down percentage-wise from what they did the other night to Wisconsin. Rebounding edge belongs to Michigan, and the turnovers, Michigan nine, Illinois six. And you mentioned uh, on a couple of occasions that uh, Illinois can beat you in so many different ways, not just one category. You've got to win more than one category to uh, survive the fighting Illini. The Illinois Ball Club leads Michigan 48-44 at halftime. Let's take a look around the country at some of the other scores on the Budweiser scoreboard. Purdue and Wisconsin of the Big Ten coming up a little bit later on, along with Iowa and Minnesota. Not a bad win for Iowa in the Big Ten at North Carolina, was it? Not at all. 
Ohio State will have a tough one with Michigan State. Much improved uh, Spartans. We saw them the other night. Indiana playing host to Northwestern. Bobby Knight going for what is 500th coaching victory, I believe. Right. South Carolina leading Cincinnati 30 to 27 in the first half, and some big games coming up later. And that is a look at the Budweiser scoreboard, and we will be back to Assembly Hall in Champaign after these commercial messages. Some guys look at this, they see just another brake job. But when you're Mr. Goodrich, you learn real quick that behind this car, there's a somebody. Somebody who depends on these wheels. Keeping this car running right's important. That's why they brought it back here, to this GM dealership. Just another brake job, not to the guy who drives this car. Not to me either. When one of the world's big banks needed a voice and data system, they looked at the bottom line and chose Ameritech, the information company that could custom design a system linking 50 locations today, hundreds tomorrow. A flexible system that saved space, saved staff, and saved money. When you bank one, your communication system must make sense. Dollars and cents. Ameritech. Solutions that work. Hey, you talk about playground legends, you gotta bring up a guy named Lamar Monday. I've seen him just rain jump shots on people. Four, five, six shots in a row. People just started calling me money. Because <laughs> when he shot, it was money in the bank. He come down to shoot a 15 footer, everybody on the side be hollering, lay up. Slam dunks are tough. But when a 35 footer come raining out the sky, it'll wire you up. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Ameritech. Ameritech. Solutions that work. And by Gillette and the Gillette Antra Plus Shaving System. Gillette, the best a man can get. Now it's time for the keys to the game. Brought to you by Ford. Well, again, uh, when we started the, the, the broadcast, we felt like Michigan had to handle the defensive pressure. Uh, control Nick Anderson, who has hurt them uh, on many occasions, and they've done that, uh, and control the boards, and they've been successful in that area. Uh, on the other side, uh, uh, for, for Illinois, uh, run, run, run. It simply means pressure, pressure, pressure the whole game, defensively, full court, half court, and uh, offensive pressure uh, on the other end. Prevent the three-point field goal. Done a good job of that, and they played pretty decent team defense inside. So when you put the six together, the difference in the game is that Michigan has not handled the defensive pressure. Individual scoring uh, in the ball game. Some of the scoring leaders uh, for this afternoon's game. For the Fighting Illini, Kendall Gill, 16 points. He also has three rebounds. There's battle with a couple of <laughs> impressive slams. Anderson Liberty off the bench for four. Now, let's take Gil, a look. Watch the final shot of this half. And I really thought Michigan made a mistake here. Now, here was a time where they should have gone back into the zone defense because that'll force a pass uh, to the perimeter where you can go out and, and attack uh, the shooter immediately. They just, they lost their men there. Rice leading the way along with Loy Vaught off the bench, 13 points. Certainly, he helped supplement the uh, Michigan comeback. And watch Rice in action right here. Big Ten's leading scorer. Well, he's just... Uh, uh, you know, the best small forward in the country. I don't know what else you can say about him, but this is what he does best. Just rises right in your face and shoots a jumper. Ready for the start of the second half. Illinois leading Michigan by four. It'll be Michigan basketball. Mills on the inbounds to Higgins. Griffin. Well, nothing will change for Illinois. They're going to come out 
play that good, tough man-to-man. -man. And we'll see if they can capitalize on the, the great end of the first half. Higgins over the back with a three-point try. It'll belong to Illinois. Well, probably not a good shot on your first possession of the second half. Uh, I think they'd probably like to have that one back. This is Bardo. Can he battle? You know, for people who have watched Michigan play over the years, the other thing you'll notice is that Glenn Rice has improved defensively also. And they say, you know, he's, a, he's better at putting the ball on the floor now and taking to the basket offensively. And now that he does that, he understands how to defend that type of a move. Bardo off the mark. Hamilton fighting for the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Michigan. Kenny Battle on the floor. <laughs> there are no boys on the floor. <laughs> it's all men around the basket. This is Big Ten basketball right here. It's just rough and physical inside. Kenny Battle's going to need two aspirin tomorrow. Oh. Higgins to Mills. Fido trying to pry loose the rebound. Michigan gets it back. Well, they missed Griffin that time. He was wide open in the middle. Uh, possibly could have taken it to the, the basket for a layup. One thing about Illinois, Steve, and it's something that that really they have to do because they don't have the huge people inside. Everybody will go to the board. Guards, forwards, small forwards, shooting guards, everybody goes to the board. Yeah, that turnover gives it back to the fighting Illini. Well, again, and you, you saw what Glenn Rice can do now this year. He will fake, if the defense runs at him to shot, stop that jump shot, he'll fake, put it on the floor, and really made a great, uh, great play when he drew the defense. Kendall Gill, Nick Anderson, on the drive. Oh, missed the slam, but it got a foul. Well, they're going to call a foul on Glenn Rice moving under, and that's probably a good call. Uh, I think Glenn moved under at the last second to try and bother the offensive player uh, in, in hopes that it wasn't significant enough to get the whistle, but uh, good call. First, uh, second on Glenn Rice. That's the first on the team here in the second half, and Nick Anderson to the free throw line. What a player he's developed into for this uh, program. At just six points in the first half, they'd like to see him get more involved in the scoring aspect of the game in the second half for sure. Seven points for Anderson. Illinois leading by five. Opening three minutes of play, second half. Now, if Higgins can do that, bring the ball up the floor a few times, and give Ramil Robinson a break, uh, as we enter the last five, six minutes, it's going to be important. Lou Henson looking on anxiously from the Illinois, Illinois sidelines. Higgins for three. Kendall Gill kept that alive. Well, there you saw the explosive strength, and, and I don't know who it was that went up, but Griffin had, had his hand on the ball, was ready to take the rebound, and they just stripped him of it. Hamilton! His first field goal, he has four. Nearly a steal down low. Ramil Robinson hustles across. There, now that's what, well, see, now Ramil did the right thing. Kept his dribble and then picked it up and found Rice. Good look to Rice, who has 15 points. Gill trying to answer right away. Beautiful drive and a foul. Yes, it counts. This is just great awareness on Illinois' part. There's nothing more frustrating uh, to a team that after they work hard to score a basket, uh, you answered back in the space of about five seconds. Lloyd Bott returns to the lineup for Michigan, replacing Sean Higgins. Uh, I think they're probably a little upset with the two shot selections uh, by Higgins. Two three-pointers that didn't, uh, didn't quite get there. Kendall Gill, 18 points. Make it 19. Having an outstanding game. Pressure in the backcourt once again. Well, and Gill, you know, was only the fourth leading scorer on his ball club uh, through the pre-Big Ten season, but uh, he's getting 20, got 20 a game in the, the first two ball games, and, and he's just on a real hot streak right now. Reveal Robinson creates two points. 
He has 11. Illinois' lead is six with a little over 17 minutes left to go. Same mistake here. Can't Hard pick that ball up. Yep. Anderson. Well, I tell you, you'll win 20 games a year if all you did was throw it to Anderson on the baseline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> Someone may figure out how to stop that by the time you get to tournament, but of course, Illinois is a lot more than just Nick Anderson. Race off balance, nicely done. Well, and, and the same thing could be said for Michigan. They, they'll live on that play, too, if they can isolate Glenn inside. Bardo around Griffin. We haven't mentioned his name that often on offense, but uh, he showed a little talent there on his own. It was a beautiful move. Steve Bardo had seven assists in the first half of play. He now has five points in the game. And Bardo doesn't score much, but he can. Uh, he's just a very unselfish player who contributes in all phases of the game. Uh, he's the kind of kid, if you take him out of the, your lineup, you're not quite as good a team. You can't figure it out, though, because he doesn't have the stats. Here comes Battle. They're going to wave it off. Offensive basket interference. That's a good call. That was a good call. Another great move by Ramiro Robinson. Again, this takes so much strength uh, to, to gather yourself and get on balance. And that ball was going in. We'll return after these messages from your local station. If you think you can handle the big, bold taste of extra gold draft, hang on. This is the full tilt draft real beer drinkers have been thirsty for. And it looks like they aren't going to let go. Grab hold of an extra gold. It's the biggest taste that's happened to beer. Since they put it in cans. Theater Variety Series. Buy three, get three free. And for your convenience, your tickets are available now at all Ticketmaster outlets. A great lineup. Steve Warren, Edie Cormay, Wayne Newton, Paul Anka, and the Letterman. The legendary Bob Ho. The Mitzi Gator Show. Plus the one and only Tony Bennett. Buy three, get three free. Don't miss out. Now just go to your nearest Ticketmaster outlet, including Hudson's and all Triple A's, and see the great seats still available for the Fox Theater Variety Series. Remember how great you felt when your car was new and beautiful? Boy, what a feeling. But how about now when your car is ugly? Better take a look at Mako's famous half-and-half -half car and get in right now on Mako's pain-wide half-price sale. You get a supreme paint job with new ultraviolet sunscreen coating for longer, better protection. Right, a better paint job at half the price. Here's how. Call 1-800-345-8500 for a free certificate worth 50% off. Mako's new supreme paint job. Sale ends February 4th, 1989. Act now. Stay tuned to the end of today's game where we'll announce the Budweiser player of the game. And if you're a front runner, you're probably going to go with Kendall Gill, who leads Illinois with 19 points at this juncture of the game. Or if you're anticipating a return to form of Michigan, it's Glenn Rice, who has 17 points thus far. Budweiser player of the game at the end of today's telecast. And Illinois on a run right now, and they really got the momentum. Uh, and we'll see if Michigan can answer. Hamilton. Anderson up high for the rebound, fighting his own teammates, left it short, gets it back, yes, and a foul! This is what Lowell Hamilton does uh, best. He turns that, shoots that little 5th, 12, 15 foot turnaround. Uh, he's got the athletic skills to get it off against anybody, and uh, sometimes uh, bulk and height uh, aren't the key ingredient to controlling the boards. It's the quick jumping ability of the Illini uh, to finally get it done. They call Lloyd Vaught for a second personal foul. Three team fouls on Michigan, and Anderson completes a three-point play. And Illinois enjoying by far its largest lead of the afternoon. 
Robinson watched by Smith. Now's when your point guard really is important because it's his job to get the offense set up and get the team a good shot. Hughes on the reverse off the rebound. Well, that's what your role players have to give you. Uh, eventually, you know, Griffin and, and Taylor and Hughes uh, you know, have to come up with a basket every once in a while. Bardo. Uh, Gonna Gr call it on the uh, defender Griffin. Mm -hmm. Did not have position. And this is a little mismatch because Griffin just doesn't have the quickness to guard uh, any of the Illinois players on the perimeter. Second personal on Griffin coming up right here. Tried to get back on defense. Was unable to get position. Bardo at the free throw line. And Bardo made a good decision. Once he once he got that half a step, you know, he, he, he jumped towards the basket. Now, if another defensive uh, a player had been able to step in and establish position, it would have been a charge. But that was a good call. 14-23 left to go in this game. Illinois leading Michigan now by 12. Kirk Taylor back into the lineup for Michigan, replacing Mike Griffin. And I would think that they're probably going to have to get uh, Higgins and Mills back in there because uh, they, they, la they lack a little bit of offensive punch right now. Uh, additionally, as you saw, we just saw, they're getting little feet on the boards a little bit. Game of streaks, and Michigan's going to need a streak to get back into this one. Plenty of time. We have over 14 minutes to go, second half. There you see this overplay pressure defense from the Illini. Uh, good move right there. Hughes off the mark with the shot. Pride loose by Anderson away from Vaught. Bardo. Good oh. look to battle. And apparently they've got a foul. It's going to be a foul on Bardo for charging. Yep. Taylor stepped in. Again, uh, with a 13-point lead, uh, we've seen four or five uh, two-on-one situations now where uh, Illinois either turned it over or, in that case, uh, uh, commits the charge. Taylor hustles it across. Glenn Rice. Robinson. Left it short. Michigan looks a little tired right now. Bardo to Hamilton. Glenn Rice up high for the board. Michigan trailing by 13. The lead is Jennifer Robinson intercepted on the play by Bardo. Or rather by Battle. Battle to Hamilton. Better get a timeout. Well, and here's what caused it. Uh, ran the fast break perfectly. Run it right down the middle of the floor. Stopped at the foul line and hit, his ever, hit the guy on the wing. Uh, he's got the best shot at going straight to the basket. Illinois up by 15. Taylor, Lloyd bought. That quiets the crowd for a moment. That is so sweet. I mean, that's an NBA move right there. He comes off the bench. 12.45 to go. Well, we'll find out what Michigan's made of now. Battle. Higgins the rebound. We'll also find out if Illinois is smart enough now to not shoot the ball too quick and still work hard on the offensive end to get a good shot. Sometimes you get a little lackadaisical here. You start taking the lead for granted. Uh, you shoot bad shots. You look up, and Michigan's run off a nine-point run, a nine point run themselves. They've run off four in a row. Battle trying to answer here. Leaves it short. Battle in among the trees looking three, for room. And he's three seconds. Three-second violation coming up. Glenn Rice now with six second-half points for Michigan. Has brought the Wolverines 
back to within 11. Ramil Robinson quickly up off the bench, returns to the action. Well, uh, to get themselves uh, back into the flow, you, you saw what Michigan did the last two possessions. They came down and used their height and strength advantage inside, got past it from Vaught and Glenn Rice. Eight minutes gone by, second half. This is Sean Higgins. Offensive foul being called on Higgins. Called him for a hook on the drive. You don't see that very often. That's a good call. Five team fouls, second on Higgins. 11.54 left to be played here in Champaign. Right now, Illinois leads impressively. We'll be back after these commercial messages. Piedmont Airlines is making it easy for you to visit old friends, like the Crab Apple. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Crab Apple. Or your favorite acting teacher. The moot, The moot. Or your old college buddy. Hey, guys. Piedmont presents Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. You can even visit an old Army buddy. Yo! You know what a three-point play is in basketball. Here's what it is at Days Inns. Great rooms, great prices, and great locations. And thanks to our 130 owners throughout the Big Ten Conference, you not only get a great room at a great price, but you get pools, lounges, restaurants, even meeting rooms. So remember, great rooms, great prices, and great locations. Now that's a winning three-point play. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody in Champaign, and boy, they're whooping it up in here in the Assembly Hall. They're fighting Illini, leading by 11 with 11.53 left to be played. Points off turnover. Illinois, 18 to 5 over Michigan. Well, I think Dick Nagy said it best. Uh, he said, when you play our team, there's a very small margin for error. You must come in and play close to your best game, or this team will beat you badly. Turnover on the part of Lowell Hamilton, Michigan, trying to claw back into it, trailing 67 to 56. Dick Nagy, for those who don't know, is the, the assistant coach for Illinois. Higgins with a good move for two. Right. Lloyd Vaught has the carom. Hughes freed up. One pass too many, perhaps, and Kendall Gill intercepts. Battle on the feet of Liberty, knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Illinois. That pass was just a little late that time. They're right ahead, too. Uh, Higgins shot that ball with no confidence. Uh, he got up there and hesitated at the top of his jump. And any time you do that, and you think about the shot, it's always going to come up short. Gilt operating against Robinson, draws the foul. On Ramil, it's his fourth personal foul, Steve, and this is going to be a, that's going to have a major impact on the final 11.09 left to be played. Already up 16 fouls now on Michigan. Bill Frieder has said he's very concerned about his guard play. They have not successfully yet replaced Gary Grant, and that's very difficult to replace a player like that. Well, Ramil Robinson, according to Coach Frieder, is his only true guard on the roster right now, because as we mentioned before, Kirk Taylor in high school really was a small forward. Well, Ramil Robinson replaces Gary Grant. Their problem is, is they don't have anybody to bring off the bench and back up Ramil, and they don't have any another guard to compliment him. Right. Hughes on the rebound had his pocket picked by Kenny Battle. Battle wide open for three. Gill up high on the long carom. Had his shot knocked away. Get the oh. Illinois now really starting to roll, leading by 14. Hughes in traffic, clears the block. 
<laughs> Reporter by Glenn that. Rice. <laughs> Rice now with nine second-half points, Steve. He has 22 in the game. Well, and that's who they have to go to now. You know, they have to look for Glenn Rice. Uh, I would say he and Vaught are the two guys that be shoot, should be shooting the ball right now. That's offensive right there. Larry Smith. We've got a foul coming up here. It's on Lowell Hamilton on a push. His third personal foul. Second on Illinois in the second half. Non-shooting affair, Michigan gets it back. And Terry Mills up off the bench, back into the lineup for Michigan. Uh, along with Kenny Bardo coming in for Larry Smith for Illinois. Well, if this is going to be a game of spurts, uh, Michigan better come up with one right now. Um, they've got to go to work on the boards. They blocked out well that time for the first time in a while and, and got the uh, over-the-back foul. Gill on the steal. Here comes Liberty. to Vaught who answers in the affirmative. Well, I, I would, I guess if you're uh, on the Michigan staff, you hope Sean Higgins just learned a lesson for the very last time. There's no reason to put that ball behind his back, and you don't do that against defensive pressure. Bring it up the floor uh, straight. Hamilton. Six second half points for Lowell Hamilton. Eight in the game. Michigan has a very tall lineup in the game. Robinson's on the bench, the point guard, with four personal fouls. Size against quickness, and a lot of times in basketball, quickness will win. Terry Mills converts. But, you know, again, you should see Michigan now pounded inside with Mills, Rice, and Vaught. Uh, but again, you know, they can't leave Robinson out of the game very long, and, and he's, he's up, uh, checked in, and he'll be in on the next whistle. Bardo around Griffin. Good look to battle. Griffin trying to feed Mills. Battle nearly intercepted, knocked it out of play. Robinson coming back on for Michigan, despite the fact that he has the uh, four personal fouls. The other night at home against Minnesota, when Robinson went out of the game for like a three or four minute stretch, Minnesota went on an 11-2 run, according to Coach Frieder, and got right back in the ball game after Michigan had built a pretty hefty lead. Well, there's no question that he, you know, he is the one player they cannot, well, he and, and Glenn Rice, those are two guys they just absolutely cannot afford to lose. Kendall Gill created this possession. Bardo trying to finish it off. Rice clears the board for Michigan. Here comes Robinson, nice feed to Mills. That really was a great, because that's a tough pass to throw, that long cross-court bounce pass. The Mills did a good job of gathering himself and not committing the, uh, the charge. Illinois by 11. Battle penetrate! <laughs> 16 for Ken Battle. I tell you, that is cat-like quickness right there. Just exploded off the turn. Um, that's just impressive, that's all. Ramil Robinson. Michigan trailing by 13. This is Rice for three. That's just unreal, too. I mean... That's his third three-pointer of the game. 12 second-half points, 25 of the game for Glenn Rice. What a player. Michigan looks like they're in a 1-3-1 zone now. At least that's how they lined up. I'm not sure what they're, what they're trying to accomplish here. Rice knocked away the backdoor try. Here's Robinson on the drive. Beautiful move. 13 for Ramil Robinson with authority down the lane. Michigan has hit its last six shots. Lou Henson senses the momentum beginning to swing. Illinois' 14-point lead has been sliced to eight with 7.27 to go. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. Passionately felt and superbly crafted. Prepare to be shaken and moved. David Anson, Newsweek. One of the best pictures of the year. As powerful as a movie can get. Steve Kometko, KCBS TV. The best American film of 1988. Four stars. Roger Ebert, the Chicago Sun Times. Gene Hackman, Willem Dafoe, Mississippi Burning. Rated R. Starts Friday, January 13th at a theater near you. Check newspaper for time. 
excuse me, folks. Sure looks like you like those Taco Bell tacos. Yep. But did you know that those 49 cent tacos are guaranteed? That means if you don't love them, you get your money back. Did you know that? Hey, pay attention here. 49 cent original tacos. You'll love them or your money back. Guaranteed. Did you hear what I said? Hey, can't you see we're eating? Taco Bell at the road. Guaranteed. Make a run for the ball. College basketball in the Big Ten continues tomorrow. Women's college basketball. Ohio State at Iowa. I saw the Hawkeyes play here last night, and they are an impressive bunch. That's tomorrow, 4 Eastern, on many of these Big Ten television network stations. Uh, well, I don't know if Michigan's in some type of a 1-3-1 matchup zone, or yeah, that's what it appears. They're in a 1-3-1 matchup zone. The Illini taking their time to figure it out. 20 to go on the shot clock, plenty of time. Good feed from Hamilton to battle. Griffin on the block. Here comes Robinson. And Michigan has made 10 of its last 11 shots. And, and that's a big play. I, you know, that happened so quickly, it was difficult for me to tell if there was any contact on a foul should have been called. If, if it wasn't a foul, it's a great, great block. And it, Griffin just got the ball. Clean block. Big and play there. Big play there. Looked like it was going to be an easy two for Illinois, and it got it turned around. Bardo going baseline, fumbled by Hamilton. Or I should say by uh, Anderson. You know, it's just funny. You never dreamt, as, as good as Illinois looked, you never dreamt Michigan would be able to get back in this ball game, and here we are, a chance to get within four. bought or make that uh, from the outside Terry Mills and battle retrieves the basketball that's not Mills shot here comes Vaught well it looked like Vaught for a second was going to run out of steam there <laughs> that was a labored jump and uh, uh, he almost tore off the front of the rim trying to get there Michigan has come back from 14 down they trail by four points off turnovers Hamilton. Oh, battle, battle, battle push for two. Griffin right to the ground. 18 points now for Kenny Battle. Michigan deficit is again six points. Battle really got away with that one. Robinson penetrating. Through the foul on Bardo. Steve Bardo, second personal foul. That's three on the team. Well, I think that's always the most frustrating call for any defensive player when you feel like you just uh, you got your hands up in the air and you're just trying to hold your ground and and the offensive player forces the contact and you get whistled. Uh, I said foul. I said two personal fouls on Bardo. I meant to say three. Also, three team fouls now in Illinois. And Ramil missing his first of the line. <laughs> Hamilton the rebound. Tough to miss a pair like that at this juncture when you're coming back. Well, Illinois is in a position right now where as long as they don't make too many mistakes and take care of the ball and, and get good shots, they're in control of this thing. Um, with five minutes to play, it's their ball game to win. So let's see how they play down the stretch. Kendall Gill for three. The follow by Anderson. Big play by Anderson. Eight point lead once again now for Illinois. Well, the last two possessions, uh, Illinois made the play. This is their game right now. Anderson for a 10-point lead. 
10 second half points for Nick Anderson, 16 in the game. Timeout, Michigan. 4-0-3 left to go, and Illinois has spurted once again to a double-digit lead. We'll be back after these commercial messages. Football fans, get ready for the battle of the century. As unbeaten Budweiser takes on an undefeated Bud Light. It's Bud versus Bud Light in Bud Bowl 1. Pick up your official scorecard wherever you see this display. Hey, Brett, super idea. You see the net on that guy? Use it to follow the action and you could win. So get ready. Get set. On January 22nd, Bud Bowl 1. This time, it's for real. When the big automakers need information fast, Ameritech is there. We're there when the nation's top retailers need to transmit data. Ameritech is there for nearly 25% of the Fortune 500 companies, 450 institutions of higher learning, and a million businesses. Moving information for the most information-intense region of the country. When it comes to communications in the Midwest, we pull it all together. Ameritech. Solutions that work. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Brody at Assembly Hall in Champaign on the campus of Illinois. That's the story. The homestanding Illini leading by 10, 4.03 left to go. Michigan with the ball. And Wayne, what I meant was it's, it's Illinois' game to win. If you're a great team and you're in a big ball game and you got a five-point lead with five minutes to play, you have got to make the big plays and come up with the win. Somehow, Terry Mills got that one to go. On the other hand, if you're a good team on the road and you're making your comeback, you've got to really execute down the stretch. Oh, it's extremely tough on the road in this type of a position. Uh, to Michigan's credit, they're hanging in there and they're, and they're answering, uh, you know, still an eight-point game, three and a half minutes to play. Far from over, obviously. Your margin of error, though, if you're coming from behind on the road, is uh, really reduced. No question. Anderson, good luck battle. Swatted out of play. Belong to Illinois. I believe that was Mills who got up on that. Kendall Gill. Gill out at the point now with Bardo joining him in two-guard offense. Well, the block shot gives them a new 45-second time clock, so, you know, they can really start using some time now. Uh, they're, they're playing very aggressively offensively, and, uh, you know, I think they're, well, it appears right now that they decide to start running some clock. Hamilton, 19 to go on the shot clock, plenty of time. Under three minutes to go in the game. Now the key for Michigan is to not foul here. Battle won't go for him. Bought the rebound. Griffin to Robinson. Rice! Hamilton the rebound. Two and a half minutes to go. Well, that was probably the key shot right there. That one goes down. Uh, it can still go either way. Now Illinois, as you mentioned, will run some clock. The Michigan's got a matchup right now. Uh, they don't have time to let this, let the shot clock run down. Coming up on two minutes left to be played. Bardo on the drive through the lane, had it slapped away in a foul call. Foul is on Rice. Steve Bardo heads to the free throw line. Well, Michigan will get Higgins into the ball game now. Uh, obviously, they need the three-point field goal. Rice has three personal fouls, and that foul put Michigan over the foul limit. Steve Bardo at the line. There you get a look at uh, Mike Griffin. Bardo hasn't scored a lot today, but Steve, he's done some of the other things well. He has about 10, 11 assists in this ball game, and pried the ball loose he's gotten a few rebounds here and there choice rebounds and well and and that's the type of player he is again uh, 
He doesn't have the great stats that a lot of the players do, but the coaching staff will tell you that uh, you know he's probably the most underrated player on their team. Uh, extremely versatile. He can play. Uh, he can play defense at any position on the floor. Um, and you'll remember last year when Illinois wasn't playing well, they moved him uh, uh, to the point guard position and started him, and uh, they won nine of the last ten ball games, and that uh, says it all. Ten point lead, under two minutes to go. Illinois on top. Higgins wants room from three. Robinson going for two down low. Rice and a foul on the rebound battle. Well, obviously what Michigan's doing here is they would prefer to get one of their good shooters open on the wing to attempt a three-pointer, uh, but you don't have too much time to waste. And they judiciously, judiciously decide to get it inside and, and go after the basket. Nick Anderson picks up his third personal foul. That is only four on the team with a minute 39 to go in the game. Kirk Taylor replaced by Lloyd Vaught. Leaving the lineup, Lowell Hamilton for the Fighting Illini. Len Rice at the line. He's had an outstanding day offensively. Rice now with 26 points. Uh, that was just their 14th foul. So evidently they, they determined, even though that was a rebound, and, and Glenn Rice was going up for the shot they gave him two. Yep. Glenn Rice makes good on a pair. Mike Griffin back into the lineup. Demetrius Caleb is in also for Michigan. Well, no time to waste now. If you can't get a steal uh, pretty quickly, you're going to have to give the foul. The inbounds to Gill, and he's fouled right away by Higgins. John Higgins, third personal. Minute 39 left to go. Neil Robinson back in. There's Lou Henson patrolling the sideline for Illinois. His team is playing real well right now. No question about that. This is a very big win for them. With a minute 39 to go, they've got an 86-78 lead over Michigan. If they hang on to win this one, it's a very impressive win, even though it comes at home. It comes against a team that, do out, you know, the critics, the skeptics have been saying Illinois doesn't have enough strength up front. They don't have enough big people. They do so many of the other things well then maybe they offset that deficiency. That may be the only real deficiency they have as a team. Well, it's the old thing. You, you can measure the size uh, of a person, but you can't measure the heart. Uh, his players always play hard. They're great athletes with their improved shooting skills. Uh, you know, they've got the ability to beat any team in the country on any given night. Minute 30 to go. Higgins offers a three-pointer. Uh, additionally, they'll beat most teams any night of the week. Bardo trying to keep it clear. Hamilton! Robinson trying to answer. From the outside, Lloyd Vaught connects. Did they get three? Yep, they gave him three. to be played. Illinois still in control. Back after these commercial messages. The thing on a personal level that probably frustrates all of us, most of us, certainly myself personally, is when you hear companies using up to X percent less. And you really need to do your homework before you choose intelligently. Uh, we, we have distance sensitivity time of day, day of week sensitivity. Most cases, our cost differential will be small enough that the quality will more than differentiate you staying with at and You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days In, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 130 Days In owners right here in the Big Ten Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes
comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody, the final 65 seconds. Loy bought off the bench is 9 of 10 from the field. He just hit a three-pointer for Michigan. Time winding down to this one, though. Demetrius Caleb commits the foul here. That's his first personal foul. And they'll be shooting free throws. Loy bought off the bench with nine second half points. He has 22 points in the game. Well, and I guess uh, if you're rooting for the Wolverines, you've got the guy at the free throw line you want to see there. Larry Smith's only attempted four free throws on the entire season. Two of two today from the line is Larry Smith. He has four points. So he's four of six. Yeah. <laughs> on the year. Hey, 100% there, and that's what matters. I'll tell you something. Right now, you've got to look at Illinois as the team to beat in the uh, the Big Ten, along with Iowa. Certainly, Iowa, Michigan, Illinois, all in that upper echelon. Well, Ohio State trying to break into that yeah. group, and, and really, Indiana's a team that uh, we don't know how good they can be. They're coming along pretty quickly right now. Well, Michigan, Illinois, and Iowa are amongst the elite teams in the country. Indiana is uh, always going to be good, and it's so difficult to win down there. And you're right, Ohio State's trying to break in. Lloyd Vaught with an air ball. Under a minute to go. Illinois is going to kill the clock here, try to. It's about a 12-second differential in the shot clock and game clock. Got a foul on Glenn Rice. His fourth personal stops the clock with 42 seconds to go. Kendall Gill heads to the free throw line. What a game he's had. 24 points. He's also contributed four steals after getting five uh, uh, just the other night against Wisconsin. Uh, been the outstanding player in the ball game for Illinois. And again, as you know, as we look at and evaluate the Michigan team, this is this is a great ball club. Uh, but again, they they do have a problem. They need to solve at the guard spot. Uh, Rumil Robinson is is a great great player, uh, but he's going to tire if he has to do all the work of running the ball club and bringing it down the floor the entire ball game. Kendall Gill with his second upcoming. Impressive win here for Illinois. Second ranked team in the country against sixth ranked Michigan. We'll be back for the final second after these commercial messages. The multiple port fuel injected Ford Escort GT. Because what's rock without roll? You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. Today's Budweiser player of the game is Kendall Gill of Illinois. Outstanding ball game, 26 points and four steals. Congratulations to Kendall Gill, today's Budweiser player of the game. Glenn Rice for the three-point try. Battle fighting for the rebound. Small keeps it alive. Rice puts it back out front. Robinson for three. No. Bardo takes the back tap, is on the run, and he was fouled. Kirk Taylor reaching out and grabbing him. Third personal on Taylor, and it stops the clock with 25 seconds to go. Illinois leading by 13. One point to make about Michigan, and you just said it, and Bill Frieder said it before the game. We've got problems at guard. If you come in here and go up against a team like Illinois, 
with your guard position questionable, you're going to have big trouble. Oh, you will. I, you have to have two or three different people who can take the load off and, and bring the ball down the floor. And see, what you might want to do is you come in here and say, okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll have one of our forwards bring the ball down the floor and, and give our guards a rest. But because Illinois is so versatile and they can guard people at every position, they'll have their guards guard your forward when he brings it down. So there's no getting away from it. You've got to come in here uh, capable, ready, and willing to handle defensive pressure, uh, bringing the ball down the floor. Bardo, six of six at the line. Makes good on two more. Up off the bench, several substitutions for Lou Henson and company. Brian O'Connell, number 32, comes into the game, replacing Bardo. P.J. Bowman, Brian O'Connell, Marcus Liberty in the ball game, along with Mike McDonald and Irvin Small for Illinois. Final 24 seconds. Rice for three. Glenn Rice now with 30 points. 20 seconds remaining. And a timeout called by Michigan. 96 to 84. Illinois leading Michigan. The fighting Illini will go to 15 and 0. 3 and 0 in Big Ten play. They rank second in the nation. Michigan at 15 and 14 and 2 overall. Now 2 and 1 of the conference. Sixth ranked in the nation. Today's game has been brought to you by U.S. Air. U.S. Air warms up your winter with flights to Arizona, Florida, and California. By Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Budweiser. Be twin age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Our executive producer is Peter Rolfe. Today's game was produced by Kent Samuel and directed by Roy Alfers. Our technical director was Jerry Girard and our associate director, Susie Evans. Special thanks to both the Michigan and Illinois Sports Information Departments, to Coach Bill Frieder of Michigan and Lou Henson of Illinois and their staff for the help they provided us in covering this game today. On the inbounds, a foul right away. Stops the clock with 19 seconds to go. Well, it's it's about the, the crowd doesn't like the, yeah. the timeout with 20 seconds for the foul, and I agree with them. I mean, that uh, there's no way uh, Michigan can win this ball game. John Higgins with personal foul number four. Rice, 30 points. Bought 22 points here. Gill, 26, and Battle, 18. Gill and Battle lead Illinois. Rice and Bought lead Coach Frieder's Michigan squad. You know, Michigan now is, uh, you know, they've got to bounce back from a big loss. They've got... Uh, they will have played three games in five days, and, uh, you know, you have to go on from here. It'll be interesting to see if Illinois bounces back and come, can come up with a, another big effort effort after a, a, a game where they were very emotionally uh, involved. Higgins off the mark, and the rebound by Marcus Liberty. Time winding down to this one, Liberty to pad the stats. And that is it. Number two has confronted number six. And on this day, number two, the better. By 12 points. Lou Henson's fighting the line eye now, 15 and 0 overall. Once again, the final score, Illinois 96, Michigan 84. For Steve Grody, this is Wayne Larrabee saying so long from Assembly Hall. Don't forget, coming up on Wednesday, Purdue at Minnesota on many of these Big Ten Conference Network stations. 8 o'clock Eastern. Don't forget tomorrow, a special edition women's basketball to the Big Ten Network on many of these stations starting at 4 Eastern, Iowa Place, host to Ohio State. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Big Ten Productions in conjunction with Raycom Sports and Entertainment.